College football big game previews week two. We got to find a better segment name. <laughs> I don't know, man. It just I mean, that says just, what it is. It's just right to the point, I guess, right? All right, this is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on all of these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six incredible sports books Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Sam's Town, Hollywood, First Jackpot. Opening soon, the sports book at Fritz, uh, excuse me, Fitz Casino. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. Ah, man, there were a lot of options this week. There were some small ones. No, no, this was this is going to be a good week for college football. Yeah, this is this is a good week because there's interesting game. Let's let's go on and jump into the first one. All right, game number one, college game day is going there. Clemson is minus thirteen and a half at Texas A and M. The over under is fifty six. It is six p.m. on ESPN at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. Game day is going to be there. Clemson beat Furman last week, forty eight to seven. Texas A and M won fifty nine to seven over Northwestern State. Two high school teams. Both of them should have beaten them the way that they did. Correct. Uh, is Kelly Bryant going to play most of this game, or it, are they going to run to Trevor Lawrence? Kelly Bryant didn't really play well against Furman. Uh, the other question will be, does Jimbo have you know any tricks up his sleeve for this? He and Dabo know each other insanely well. They both have four wins against each other, which I found surprising. I don't yeah. know why that surprised me. No, I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, they're pretty – Florida State – is and should be an equally sized and caliber program to Clemson. Agreed. And they should be 500. Texas A&M's Travion Williams ran 20 times for 240 yards last week. That's a uh, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, that's that's I. That's, that's what like over 10 yards. Yeah, a it's, carry? it's ridiculous. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, A&M had 756 yards of total offense. Kellen Mond is going to have to be lights out if they have any chance of winning this game. He was only 51.5% completion percentage in 2017. He had eight touchdowns and six picks and got benched for the last three games of the year because Nick Stark will beat him out. And then we come into this season. I'm still surprised. I still don't understand. But he looked fantastic, granted, against Northwestern State. It's, he looked yeah. like he's got this offense down, and that might be what it is because this is definitely a different system, right? This is completely different from what Kevin Sumlin was doing and I think maybe Mond fits this better. No, he probably does. Look, I trust Jimbo. I, I'm excited to watch this game. You know, it's a big point spread. Clemson should beat them handily. Crazy things can happen. And, you know, night games on the road. No, you know how I feel about that. I, I, I don't know, man. I like Clemson in this game. Like, I'm not going to bet this game because – I understand that crazy stuff happens. I'm probably going to bet this game. It's not going to be one of my gambling picks, and I'm going to tell the world. I'll tell you if I'm betting it or not. But it, it, I guess it depends on how much the line moves, right? Because I think this I'll, opened up I'll, at like I'll 11 take, and a half. I'll take A&M at 13 and a half. That's it. Look, I've lost would, money on worse before. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, it won't be the first time that's I've true. Lost, I lost some money. That's I would wait until it gets to fourteen because I I have a feeling it will. Oh get no, there. I'm going to wait until it gets closer to game day because I absolutely think it's going to keep moving in Clemson. Yeah, favor. it's it's going to move. Uh, let's talk about game number two, which is where I thought college game day should be. Me too. I was wondering if we were going to say that because I was I, really annoyed that they didn't go here. That's, I, I need to text Felica this week and and just see how many opportunities are they going to have to, to go, go to Columbia to go to Williams Bryce. Like it, probably not many. I mean, if they win this game. They've got some good games at home this year. But but no, no they don't. Who else are they going to, you going to go for Florida? Texas A&M. Okay, now that's a big game. That's yeah. a, but, but it just depends. I mean, if Texas A&M's got four losses by well, then. But they, they have to play at Florida. Oh, uh, then they, so you can't even go to that game. Yeah, so it's just kind of. This yeah. is this is your opportunity to go to Columbia. And they hadn't been to Columbia in, in a years. A long time. Yeah, I talked You're going to gonna have plenty of opportunities about that. With, with Jimbo. At, at, at A&M to go there. You're right. Georgia is a 10-point favorite at South Carolina. The over-under is 53. 2.30 p.m. kick on CBS at Williams-Brice Stadium in Columbia, that South Carolina. That place is going to be so rocking. Georgia's first road game since the 41-17 to loss at Auburn in 2017. In the two games that Georgia lost in 2017, they averaged less than three yards per carry. South Carolina gave up 3.23 yards to Coastal Carolina last week. South Carolina has got to get pressure on Jake Fromm and force mistakes. However, if they do get pressure on Jake Fromm and he's not performing, how quick do they pull that trigger and they bring in Justin Fields? 
I have no idea about that. I don't know. The talent discrepancy here is all on Way Georgia's in side. Georgia's favor. Way in Georgia's I mean, favor. They should close. win this game, like, handily. But, but the crazy discrepancy side is way in Will Muschamp's favor. You got that right. And it's not close. And I'm going to go with crazy. You know I love South Carolina. I will have money on South Carolina. Plus a ten and a half is what I saw that this afternoon. Oh, it, it already moved. And I, and I will be having money on the money line. I could, uh, I could believe that. Well, you hit money line on Virginia Tech and several others. Yeah, you had money line on uh, what LSU? I had money line on LSU. I had money line on Vitek, and I had money line on Maryland. I also lost. That's right. I, I'm not going to tell you all the wins. I, I also had some money line. Law. I bet a lot of dogs. You love betting dogs. This the morning set of games, the first set of games. I had a lot of dogs. Three ten point dogs. I bet the money line on one of them came in, made up for all the rest, and carried me through the rest of the day. And then I hit one Sunday. Hit one Monday. Not too shabby. Good weekend. Not too shabby. I, I, I had a great weekend. I'm gonna go with South Carolina on this one. You take the money. I mean, you take the point spread. I take the point spread. Yeah. Um, I don't know that they like. Look, it just depends on how crazy Debo Samuel goes. It depends on Jake Bentley whether or not he, you know, decides to throw a bunch of picks like he did in several games last year. I think he is a game changer. I think Debo is a game changer. Oh, Debo I think, Samuel is an absolute. Game I think changer. Rico Dowdle at running back is fantastic. But look, Georgia has got players all oh, over the freaking no field. Doubt. No, Man, we're not. DeAndre we're, Swift yeah. is going to have a monster game if they are letting him run the football. That defensive line has got to close up shop. They've got to stop the run. That's the only way that you can beat Georgia, period. That's the only way to do it. No, there's no doubt. And the talent discrepancy, we already said, it's not close. No, it's really not. It's, <laughs> if these it's two teams, worlds apart. If these two teams didn't hate each other, if these two coaches didn't hate each other so badly, if, if, if there Remember, wasn't... Remember, Muschamp is a Georgia grad. I know He's that. a Georgia alum. No, he wanted that job. <laughs> if if the animosity yeah, but he took wasn't the Florida job. If, gonna... <laughs> if the animosity wasn't so bad and the the home field advantage is gonna be just so crazy in South Carolina, I would say they'd have no chance. And this number should be seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, it should be way up there. But yeah. hey, you remember it opened in the off season. I thought it was crazy the, because it was a game Cox. That's a, you know me. you know they scored forty nine points last week. Against Coastal Carolina, that is the most points they have ever scored under Will Muschamp. That surprised me. I went back and looked. I said, "There's no way." I mean, it's Coastal. they scored 48 against you know a directional school, yeah. uh, not last year, I think, but like two years ago. But like, I mean, are you kidding me? Hey, man, we'll see. It, it should be fun. Two thirty CBS games are always a good time. Number three game, USC at Stanford. Stanford minus four. Right now, it opened at minus six, minus four. The over under is fifty three. That's seven thirty p.m. on Fox. It is at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. USC beat Stanford twice last season. Neither game was at Stanford. All right, one was the uh, Pac twelve championship game. One was at USC. San Diego State held Stanford to only one point seven nine yards per carry last week and only fifty yards rushing. So sad. South uh, uh, San Diego State had 150 rushing yards, 4.05 yards per carry. USC gave up 300 plus yards rushing to UNLV last week in a 43 to 21 win. JT Daniels, who is still supposed to be in high school by the way, 22 out of 35, 282 yards and a touchdown. First road start though. Here's the the bad part about it being the first road start for uh, for Stanford. There'd be like nine people there. The students aren't there yet. Even if they were there, they wouldn't show up for this game, Gary. Man, I think they'd show up for USC. No, they're just smart kids school. These kids don't care. You must be crazy. That place can get a little raucous. I've, I've, I've watched these games on TV. They don't look very ruckus. Well, against Washington State and Cal and, and whatever. Like, those games don't matter to them. So you're not going to show up for an, a divisional game? A game in your division? Not those guys. I would. I love that place. That is a beautiful, beautiful piece of land out there, man. I'm not. I'm not I'm saying telling it's you. not. No, I, I know. Just, I know you're not. I'm just. They that, just like, don't love football. That's. I, I visited there last year. It's not a priority. That's. Oh no, it's not. That's. So when I went out there last year, last uh, August or whatever it was, I was ama- I was trying to find a postcard of the football stadium 
like or or just a football postcard to send back to my dad. Nothing. David Shaw is seventy four and twenty two overall as a coach there. Those kids are gonna grow up to be billionaires. Hey, you got that right. They're gonna all take over Silicon Valley and they're Ooh. gonna invent apps that we spend fortunes on and who you like in this game? You taking Stanford? I'm taking Stanford. I took Stanford at minus three and a half. That line went back up to four. I have as of no today. idea what to do with this game. And if if I'm just taking the team that getting points, I'm give me give me the USC. That's, <laughs> you love dogs. Well, no, that's, I just well when I have no idea, I'm just going to take the team that's going to start off with a head start. That that makes sense. Well, it's, I told somebody on uh, on one of the YouTubes the other day. They said it's Chris smoking crack. Like what's he talking about? I mean, and I said I do no, have hobbies. I said it's not crack. Uh, he's just allergic to chalk. That's it. Like you just hate chalk. I do. I do hate chalk. Yeah, chalk is boring, man. You, you gonna hate my gambling picks? Later. I know. I know. Woo-hoo. There's no doubt. This week was bad for me. I don't feel great about it. But like these were the games that I. Gary, my was, numbers was wide eyed with me yesterday when we were making bets. He was like, <laughs> "You know what? You giving that guy real money for that?" Yeah, I was a little surprised. That's right. But hey, they've been hitting for you. Hey. So as long as they hitting. Who am I to judge? Cash and checks. Uh, who, you, so you're rolling USC. I'm going to take you. I'm just going to take whatever points I can get. I'm going to take the points. Okay. All right. Next game up, Michigan State. Minus seven and a half. I think it's actually dropped to six and a half. So yesterday you, evening. You can get it for less than a touchdown. Yeah. So it's uh, Michigan State. We'll just say minus six and a half right now. At Arizona State, the over-under is 55 and a half. It is the 9.45 p.m. Pac-12 after dark ESPN game at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. I love it. I love it. Arizona State won Herm Edwards' debut 49-7 to over UT San Antonio. And Michigan State survived Utah State last week, 38-31. Did you watch that? I did. Friday well, night game? I, I, was, I was in and out a lot. But, yes, I was, I was very much aware of what was going on. Arizona State Saturday night. I was sweating that out. Lost money on that game. That's Air, right. Arizona State. You lost money on which game? On Michigan State? Michigan State game. Oh, you, God, you didn't take Michigan State minus a, 24. It was a Friday night game. I had nothing else to do. I was doing family But you bet stuff. a favorite? I, well, I was just, yeah, because you love Michigan State. I, I just know. like You like Dan Antonio. Antonio. I understand. Look, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't crazy. That's, I understand. It wasn't a Memphis bet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh Arizona State's defense gave up two rushing yards on 34 attempts. Two. 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 Point oh six yards per carry. That is insane. Michigan State's defense gave up 25 yards on 25 attempts, but they gave up three touchdowns. So, you know, what are you going to do? Let, you, me, let me tell you what I love about this. Well, this game has me conflicted every way possible. I think I'd probably take the under on. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's probably the that's probably the bet to take. Like Arizona State scored forty nine points and Michigan State scored thirty eight, and I would still probably take the under. So well, yeah, they both played high school teams. Yeah. So so here's here's I love Pac twelve after dark. I love taking the home team. I love taking the home team when they're catching points. But what I like more than all of that is I like when a big boy, a bully program that's supposed to be really good, gets pushed to the brink and almost loses. Almost embarrassed. All, yeah, on, on national TV, when they're the only game in town that night, I really like betting them the next week because I think this week's of practice was a week of pure hell. I think those guys Probably are so. going to come out more fired up. Ready. they got to make a point. They can't almost lose on national TV and then be on national TV again the next week and, and lay an egg when you're supposed to be a top 15 team in the country and you want to be taken respectable and, and, and serious in a strong division with Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State, you know, you got to you can't lay an egg twice. Utah State's quarterback Jordan Love went 29 of 44 for 319 yards, but he had zero touchdowns and two interceptions. They got it right down next to the, next to the goal line and then ran it in three times. Uh, Arizona State's Manny Wilkins was 16 out of 24, 237 yards, four touchdowns last weekend. If Arizona they play, State they play a much better quarterback, uh, agreed. If Arizona State can run the football, even no, they don't even have to run the football. If they can protect Manny Wilkins, that's it. I think that they will they will be in a good like a good spot, a good position. Like I said, I'm more conflicted on this than ever before. If I'm gonna make a pick, I got to make a pick. I'm not 
betting against Antonio laying an egg twice. I'm I'm doing the same thing. If it's six and a half, like if I it get gets it for over under a touchdown, a touchdown yeah. if it's over a touchdown, then we're thinking. Give me Pac-12 after dark. Yeah, I know that's so crazy. It's so close. But hey, man, half a point is is money. I but I don't. I, I have a feeling that if D'Antonio's right and what I think is going to happen, these big boys coming off these close losses or close wins um, against small schools, I don't know that that half point's going to matter. I think they're going to blow them out. It could get ugly. I don't think they'll blow them out. I think uh, I think Arizona State's defensive coordinator, who actually came from San Diego State, yep, that's right. I I think he knows what he's doing. They, I, I think this will be a close ball game. I love but I, 12 after dark. I do like Michigan State minus My wife six and a half, it. but I don't like them at seven and a half. You spend all day watching football, and what do you do at midnight? I'm still watching football. <laughs> you better believe it. My wife does the same thing. She's what? Who are you even watching? Don't worry about it, baby. Like you ain't look. It, it, I'm gonna flip it over to Hawaii when this one's done. Right? <laughs> like don't worry about it. I Just got going to bed. I'll see you. I'll see you in February. Iowa State at Iowa is game number five. Iowa is a four. No, I'm sorry. It it was four and a half. It's down to three and a half now. Funny thing about that, most of the spread money is coming in on Iowa State. No, on Iowa. Sorry, it's, it's going down. it's going the opposite way. Yep. Makes me think real strong about Iowa State here. So uh, either way, over under is forty nine and a half. 4 p.m. game on Fox at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa won last year 44-41 in overtime in Ames. Last week, Iowa beat Northern Illinois 33-7 in week one. You won that bet. Uh, Iowa State versus South Dakota State got canceled. We talked about that one. Rain, whatever. Uh, Iowa State returns quarterback Kyle Kemp, running back David Montgomery, an awesome wide receiver core, six starters from an incredibly improved defense. And we talked about this before. Does Iowa State not playing last week help or hurt? You said it hurts a lot. I think it hurts a lot. I, I think really you're probably do. right. Let, the Vegas number always makes me pump the brakes. But I just I just think playing these games matter. Even yeah. if it's against a high school team, I think it matters. Let me ask you a different question. Matt Campbell coaching for another job? Uh, I heard maybe I, I heard a, he's from I, Ohio. I listened to about six different podcasts and one of them, and I, I wish I could credit them said that if, if Michigan and Harbaugh kind of don't go the way they want it to and Harbaugh maybe goes back to the NFL, that's a perfect road for him to say, let's, let's go get a guy that's been winning ball games. Recently. He's, he's from Ohio. But I don't know that. Matters. But I don't guess it really matters. No, you like go, I think you go to the well. man that pays you. I think he'd fit well. Um, is he a Big Ten guy? Can he coach in the Big Ten and win? Yeah, I think he can. I mean, you, he's playing Big Ten ball at Iowa State. Like strong defense, figure out how to score on offense. Like he he's not playing Big Twelve brand. No, he's definitely not playing Big Twelve brand. So I I could see him doing doing the Big Ten. Uh, let's talk about Iowa's quarterback Nate Stanley. I loved him in the preseason. Mm. Man, against Northern Illinois, 11 out of 23 for 108 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Now, they didn't really need him because they ran all over the place. Well, I was about to say, you get a but, big lead, you just don't want anybody to get hurt. But 11 out of 23 for 108 yards? I mean, nah. I, at some point in time, if you got a big lead, and I, and I don't, I didn't watch any of that game, so I'm not going to tell you. I mean, I, I was checking the score, make sure my bet was covered, and I was good. But, like, I think – it's like in preseason for the NFL, quarterbacks throw a lot of interceptions. Yeah, because they're trying to fit the ball in. They're trying to see what they can get away with and what they can't. If they're throwing the ball late in the game, it's because he's trying to see what works and what doesn't. Right. And that I'm going to give him a pass for. If it's game script and you're doing it at the beginning of the game, we're having a different conversation because that's when you end up in a Penn State, Michigan State situation where – Whoa, and Northern Illinois was work. just not strong enough to No, they to just don't have the dudes. Compete. They just yeah. don't have the, the dudes up front in the trenches. So This will be a big I, game I for Nate I Stanley. I didn't watch it to be able to tell you if I need to worry about that or not. Let's talk about the honorable mention games. Oh, no, no, no. Let's take our picks. we got to do a pick on this. Uh, look, I picked in the preseason Iowa State was going to win this game outright. I'll go in and stick with it. Like, I don't feel good about it. Um, I wish they could have had a warm-up game. I really yeah. wish they could have had a warm-up game. I don't like that Vegas is doing weird things with the line and the money. I'm still going with Iowa. 
That makes sense. All right, so we're on opposite sides on this one. Let's talk about honorable mention games. Mississippi State at Kansas State, 11 a.m. on ESPN. State looked dominant last week. Kansas State fits the, what you were talking about with uh, didn't look good, barely survived South Dakota. And that number is getting huge. It, it opened up at State minus six and a half. And, now and it's, it's now digits. at 10. So, and this is on the road. Don't you? Nick Fitzgerald's don't. first game. Because uh, he was suspended for the first game against uh, the fighting Bill Snyder is going to come out and make you regret that. That's man, I want to say that, but like I just I don't know that they got the dudes to compete with. How crazy does that sound right now? By the way, they don't have the dudes to compete with Mississippi State. They're going to be fine. I'm, You're probably right. I'm, I, I will. I will have substantial cash on State. Penn Kansas State. State. Penn State at Pitt, 7 p.m. on ABC. Another one of those teams. Survived last week. Almost got embarrassed at home by App State. And they get to play in their home state. Which no, is a yeah, big home state game. at Heinz Field. That will be 50%, if not more, more Penn, state, Penn fans. state fans. That's right. Now, however, this is the site where they got beat by Pitt two years ago. That's right. And it cost them oh, a shot at a national no, championship. Pitt, Pitt has ruined people's seasons in those big games. And that's, and that's real. I'm just telling you, man. I don't think you got a right coach. Now. You got a coach like Franklin – that's that good. He's not going to lay an egg two weeks in a row. He's just you, not. You we're going right. to let everybody overreact, and we're going to let everybody bet Pitt, and they're going to say, "Oh, it's a rivalry game," and "Oh, it's technically at Pitt," and so they're going to have all the home field advantage. And Penn State looks so bad, and just y'all just dump all that money, and I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to say, James Franklin's the better coach. Penn State's the better team. I don't care what the number is. They're going to beat them, and they're going to handle their business. Kentucky at Florida, 6.30 p.m. on SEC Network. Kentucky has lost 31 consecutive times to the Gators. A long time. Dan Mullen's first SEC game as a head coach at Florida. It's a 14-and-a-half point spread. Real close. All right? I'm telling you, this one's going to be real close. I might I wanna, have this one in my gambling picks. I want to see Kentucky win this game so bad. If this was at Kentucky, I'd call it. Man, I think a lot of people called it last year, and it didn't didn't turn out right. But yeah, but that just but, happens. You're going to lose. I know. I mean, but that's uh, – I'm telling you, real close. Kentucky's got a running back. They. I want it to be close. I want it to be good. I want it to be entertaining. And they got some boys on the line. And I don't like Florida. So, Florida didn't really stop the run last week. We'll get to that, though. Duke at Northwestern, 11 a.m. on ESPNU. Northwestern, a three-point favorite in Chicago. <sighs> Our West Lot Pirates, boys. We're going uh, to make it up there one day for a game. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Uh, I do like Northwestern in this one. Duke looked really good against Army last week. But, ah, I mean, they're going on the road. Northwestern is, uh, is a good, like, strong football team. Both as, well-coached as Les teams. Miles would say. That's right. Damn both, strong football team. Both well-coached. This will be gonna, a fun game to watch. I'm going to take the team going home after a big conference road victory. Yeah. Over a team that beat a non-conference opponent that they're supposed to beat at home, now having to travel on the road, see how they travel. I I like Pat Fitzgerald. I think he's one of the best coaches in college football. I just, this is where I always wonder, how could he do? He does so well with the talent they have. What would he look like? At a bigger school? It's a good question. Finally, Georgia Tech opened up a three point favorite at South Florida. That's 11 a.m. on ABC. And we'll go on and throw this in since we're uh, running out of time. Memphis at Navy, 2 30 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. Memphis opened up as a three and a half point favorite. They are now a six and a half point favorite. That line is way on over here because Navy went and got blown out at Hawaii last week. Georgia Tech, South Florida. South Florida lost a lot of dudes last year. They got Blake Barnett starting quarterback. He looked all right. But South Florida gave up 192 rushing yards to Elon last week. I feel like Georgia Tech is probably going to run the ball a lot. It's uh, going to be an interesting game to watch because I think South Florida I think good, both but... of these are in our gambling picks, aren't they? No. No? No. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, Georgia Tech I've got. And I've got Memphis. Yep. So we'll get into that. A little sneak peek. So that'll wrap it up. We're giving you uh, the games that you need to go and check out. We're going to tell you how to be a winner in the next go-round. But now that you know what they're, like, what you need to know about these games, go down to Tunica, make your bets, 
be a winner. As always, you can go to tunicaltravel.com for more information.